Good morning. My name is Andrea Jenkins. I'm the president of the Minneapolis City Council, and I'm going to call to order this regular meeting for Thursday, May 26. I do want to just acknowledge that I've been having some technical difficulties, so they're working on my computer, which is why we are starting a little late this morning. But we are going to start with the presentation of um, a couple of resolutions to honor um, some young men in our community uh, from De La Salle uh, Boys Basketball Team, and then again from North High Boys Basketball Team. So I will invite um, Councilmember Rainville up to present that award. Yeah, guys, why don't you come up front, so, Tess, here we go. And uh, if you can stand on either side of the coach and I. So, uh, Coach Bledsoe and I are going to uh, read this resolution to, to honor your effort in the state tournament. Resolution, honoring the De La Salle boys basketball team for their achievements in the 2022 Minnesota State High School League State Basketball Tournament, whereas... De La Salle High School opened in 1900 as the first Catholic high school in Minneapolis. And whereas De La Salle High School is a part of the Christian Brothers educational system that teaches over 80,000 students in 80 countries throughout the world. And whereas De La Salle High School is located on historic Nicollet Island and educates students from over 120 different Twin City grade schools. And whereas De La Salle plays in the state class AAA boys basketball tournament, and whereas De La Salle has 38 state championships, uh, 38 state appearances, and has 24 championship titles over those 38 appearances, and whereas De La Salle holds the Minnesota State High School League record for consecutive state tournament appearances with 12. And whereas, during Coach Bledsoe's five-year tenure as head coach of the De La Salle basketball team, they have made a state tournament appearance every year. And Coach, could you uh, read the last whereas with the players' names, please? And take a step forward when Claudia comes up. Nazir Whitlock. P.J. Pons. Amir Everett. Israel Moses. Marcus Anderson, Devon Irving, Brandon Hoban, Riley Blaylark, Andrew Apirje, Dorian Pruitt, Kyle Johnson, Miles Dillon Parks, Darius Irving, Justin Johnson, Ray James Jr., Wade Gellin, and Nathan Merrill. These guys uh, comprised the Minnesota State Tournament team and made their school and community proud. Thank you, Coach. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Mayor and City Council do hereby present the honorary resolution in recognition of the De La Salle Boys basketball team's achievement in the 2022 Minnesota State High School League State Basketball Tournament. Thank you, Coach. I do want to just offer my own congratulations to the De La Salle Boys High School basketball team. 
my daughter and my first cousin attended De La Salle, and so we're very proud of you guys and the legacy that you continue to push forward. Uh, next, we have a resolution uh, being offered to the North High uh, basketball team. And uh, I see my very dear, dear friend and brother, uh, Coach Larry McKenzie, has entered into the space. And that resolution will be presented by Council Member Ellison. Good morning. Thanks for being here, Coach. Honoring the North Community High boys basketball team for their achievements in the 2022 Minnesota State High School League Basketball Tournament. Whereas North Community High School was established in Minneapolis's near North neighborhood in 1888, and whereas North Community High School provides a high quality high school education for strong athletic uh, programming, and whereas North Community High, high plays uh, in the state class AAA boys basketball tournament, and whereas North Community High has won seven state titles in 1980, 1995, 1996, 1997, 2003, 2016, and 2017. And whereas North Community High has won nine straight Minneapolis City Conference titles, and whereas North Community High has a team grade, grade point average of 3.45, and the entire varsity team is on the A or B honor roll. And yeah, that's where that's worth clapping for. Uh, and whereas during Coach McKenzie's time as head coach for the North High basketball team, they have made it to five state basketball tournaments. Um, and whereas, and do you mind reading the, the names of the players? Whereas Mario Saunders, D'Amico Anderson, Isaac Hill, Montez Johnson, Dantrell McLennan, Jacob Butler, Avon Sager, Zayson Rich, Larry Perkins, Jalen Baker, Michael Roberts, Jakari Menham, Willie Wilson, and Ghani Steven. And the coaches, Larry McKenzie, Christopher Johnson, Michael Shelton, Trent Witts, Negesha Jackson, Brandon Mitchell, Trista Taylor, Odell Wilson III, uh, Taurus Morey Jr., and Ryland Baker. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Mayor and City Council do hereby present this honorary resolution in recognition of the North Community High bas Boys Basketball Team's achievements in the 2022 Minnesota State High School League Basketball Tournament. Thank you, Coach. And I, I do want to offer Coach a few moments to say a few words. So oh, thank you, and um, I just want to say, um, accept this on behalf of our basketball players, as all of you all know, uh, Minneapolis public school year has been extended, and so our kids uh, wasn't able to navigate getting out of classes today and so couldn't be here. But we are truly honored and most certainly uh, appreciate this. Uh, oftentimes, you know, in North Minneapolis, most people are talking about all the negative things, and so for the opportunity to share that we have some young people that are doing some amazing things, uh, some future leaders in this city, uh, and to have them to be recognized. Uh, truly honored to accept this on their behalf. And thank you, Councilman. Thank you. Thank you, Coach McKenzie. Thank you, Coach McKenzie. And I did just want to offer my colleagues the opportunity to say any words um, of congratulations or support. If not, I'll um, offer a few of my own words because I think it's really important that we elevate the role of coach in our communities. Um, these are individuals that are pouring into um, young athletes, creating opportunities for them to learn teamwork, to learn um, that working together is how we win the game. And um, I know that Coach McKenzie has been playing that kind of role 
in our community for many, many years, even beyond uh, his tenure at North High. And, um, you know, we're applauding their athletic um, abilities, but Coach McKenzie is ensuring that they are also meeting their academic goals as well. And I think that is the most important aspect that we can be lifting up and honoring today. So thank you again, Coach McKenzie, for all your work in pouring into these young people, and um, congratulations. And with that, we will return to our regular order of business, uh, and I will ask the clerk to call the roll to verify the presence of a quorum. And I will note, just for my colleagues, I still don't have a computer, so please use your um, oh, really? your, your tab, and, and Council Vice President Palmasano has offered to help with the queue as well. But um, if you can help me out, I'd appreciate it. Clerk, please call the roll. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Rainville. Present. Councilmember Wansley Warnleba. Present. Councilmember Goodman. Present. Councilmember Johnson. Present. Councilmember Osman. Present. Councilmember Payne. Present. Councilmember Koski. Present. Councilmember Shugtai. Present. Councilmember Chavez. Present. Councilmember Ellison. Here. Councilmember Vita. Present. Vice President Palmasano. Present. President Jenkins. Present. There are 13 members present. At the record reflect that we do have a quorum. And uh, welcome back, Councilmember Johnson. It's good to see you. Um, and before we start with our agenda, I do want to just um, give a reminder to the public that given all the concerns, um, the continued concerns about COVID and the potential risk of community exposure caused by close proximity and public meetings, the city has deliberately um, restricted Available seating in the chamber. Overflow seating has been provided in room 319 across the hall. And there is space in the corridors outside of the chamber. The proceedings are broadcast live and in real time in those overflow spaces for public observance. Due to public health concerns and our desire to ensure everyone remains healthy, we will be enforcing the space limitations in this chamber. The security guards are here to help us enforce those space regulations and we appreciate your cooperation. And so um, we have the agenda before us today, and there are three items to add to the agenda, uh, which is the honorary resolutions that were presented to North High, um, as well as um, De La Salle. And um, we have a legal matter of a closed session um, Arthur V. Knight versus the City of Minneapolis and an ordinance introduction related to <coughs> off-sale malt liquor packaging. Um, are there any amendments to the agenda? Is this an amendment? Jeremiah. So I do believe there is one amendment. Councilmember Ellison. Okay. So I'm sorry. the 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 motion by Ellison was to um, um, include in the resolutions regarding the North Boys High School. Um, and we, as I mentioned, we do have a closed session. Are there any other amendments to the agenda, Councilmember Goodman? I'm sorry, Council President. Did you mention uh, the ordinance introduction that needs unanimous approval? Yes. Council President's mentioned all three of the amendments were passed out at your desk. Okay. So unless there are other amendments beyond those three, those three are in the motion that's before us for adoption of the agenda. Thank you. So I'm seeing no other additions to the agenda at this time. Uh, and so with that, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Wansley Horleba. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Payne. Aye. Council Member Koski. Aye. Council Member Shugtai. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and the agenda is adopted. And the first item is acceptance of the minutes from our regular meeting on May 12th 
May I have a motion to accept those minutes? Moved. Second. We have a motion and a second, and I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Horleva. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Go Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries, and those minutes have been accepted. And finally, we have the referral of petitions, communications, and reports to the proper committees may have uh, a motion. So moved. Second. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Horleva. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Osmond. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries, and those matters have been referred. Colleagues, before we begin our committee reports, I do want to just take a moment to acknowledge the horrific um, uh, <coughs> mass shootings that um, occurred earlier this week in Yavaldi, Texas, but as well as um, the previous week in Buffalo, New York, and every weekend in every major city in America, including Minneapolis, um, the, the gun violence in our communities across this nation is completely unacceptable. And um, we cannot become um, numb or um, immune to this kind of pain and violence. And so I want us to just take a moment to um, sit with that this morning as we offer our uh, condolences to all of those families, including the family of George Floyd, who we, um, we had a, a chance to meet with yesterday and, and mourn with them um, as they mourn the loss of their loved one too. Beginning with the report of the Budget Committee, which will be presented by that committee's chair, Council Member Koski. Uh, thank you, Madam President. The Budget Committee is bringing forward one item today, which is a resolution amending the 2022 General Appropriation Resolution to incorporate the second phase of funding from the American Rescue Plan Act, as amended during our markup sessions on May 18th and May 20th. I'm happy to move approval. Councilman Rakowski has uh, moved approval of the budget report. Is there um, any conversation? Uh, Council Member Wansley Warlaba. Thank you, uh, Chair Jenkins. Um, I just want to note a couple of things around some of the amendments that my office worked on and offer up my gratitude. Um, the first being I was super excited and proud to have worked with my colleagues uh, around redirecting uh, $700,000 from um, downtown to our beautiful and vibrant cultural corridors. Small BIPOC businesses matter. Um, and supporting them overall helps the well-being of our communities and it also helps elevate the, the safety of our communities. So I'm really proud to have worked with Councilmember 
uh, Chavez, uh, Chuck Tide, Council President Jenkins, uh, Council Member uh, Ellison as well, um, and moving uh, such a, a necessary investment into our BIPOC uh, businesses forward. Um, the second uh, amendment that I also want to offer up gratitude is us moving forward with um, advancing community engagement around the future of the third precinct. Um, the money allocated here will be going towards um, reaching out to the most um, impacted in that community um, that surrounds the third precinct. Um, and I do want to highlight prior to us passing um, this uh, amendment, there had not been a firm commitment from the, the city to really do the necessary work to engage community members around uh, the redevelopment process of that site. And it's a site, as you noted, Council uh, President Jenkins, as we celebrate, not celebrate, it's, we should not be celebrating this because it should never happen in the first place, but as we uplift the memory and life of George Floyd, um, we can't also separate that from the events that transpired at the third precinct that would then um, lead to a national uprising and a, a global reckoning. Um, so I'm really, um, really appreciative that, you know, after two years of, you know, this precinct being burnt down in the frustration of, of so many inequities that dominates the lives of black people and brown people in the city, um, the city is now moving forward to give our, our communities a say and what can hopefully replace that site and hopefully make it a site of collective healing and restoration um, and love. So I just wanna uplift those two amendments and thank my colleagues for also supporting them. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Payne. Thank you, Madam President. Yeah, I also wanna um, echo that sentiment of just gratitude to this body for um, the amendment that we were able to get included in this around expanding our mental health response. Um, that was a project I was able to work on as a member of the coordinator's office staff, and it is one of the most tangible and concrete responses that this institution has had to many of the injustices that we witnessed in the murder of George Floyd. And so I'm really grateful to be able to sit here at the dais and to have been able to move that budget item forward so that we can continue to actually respond to the racism that we witnessed on that day. And so I'm grateful to this body for that, and I'm grateful to the coordinator's office staff for making that a reality. Thank you, Council Member Payne. And seeing no other um, council members in queue, I don't believe, um, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Wansley Forleba. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Osmond. Aye. Council Member Payne. Aye. Council Member Koski. Aye. Council Member Shugtai. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. <clears throat> that carries and the report is adopted. The next report is from the Committee of the Whole, which will be presented by its chair, Council Vice President Palmasano. Actually, let's Ms. report would be first. My apologies, colleagues. Um, let's hear from um, the Vice Chair of the Business Inspection, Housing, and Zoning Committee, uh, Council Member Osmond, with that report. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the Business Inspection and Housing Zoning Committee is bringing forward 20 items. Item one, directing the staff to submit 2022 consolidated plan action to the Department of Housing and Arbor Development. Item two, resolution authorizing Hiawatha Academy's revenue bond refunding um, issuance and the committee sent this item without recommendation but I will be moving uh, for approval. Item three, authorizing six land sale through, throughout Minneapolis Homes unfunded property purchase rehab program. Item four, authorizing 24 land sales throughout Minneapolis Homes financing program as well as exclusive development rights at four additional properties. Item five, granting consent to the appointment of Saray Garnet Hahulu as a director of regulatory services. Item six, granting consent to the appointment of Andrea Brennan as the director of community planning and economic development. 
Item 7, approving 13 liquor license renewals. Item 8, approving underground music cafe on Onsa Liquor general entertainment license and expansion of their interior premises. Item 9, adopting business license operating condition for Wild Greek Saloon and rescinding uh, previous conditions. Item 10, adopting alternative urban area review for the East Getaway Development Project. Item 11, authorizing affordable housing trust fund program updates for 2022 notice of funding availability. Item 12, approving amend amendment to comprehensive plan built form guidance for 2731st Avenue South, authorizing contract amendment with Minneapolis Public Housing Authority for Stable Homes, Stable School Program. Item 14, appropriating funds for community engagement, pre-development services, and demolition services to the former Kmart and, Nic and new Nicollet Avenue project. Item 15, approving rezoning at 318 2nd Street North. Item 16, granting site plan review appeal for 635 Fan Burren and adopting CPIT's finding of fact. Item 17, approving rezoning at 613 Van Buren. Item 18, approving a comprehensive street name addition to add Prince Rogers Nelson Way uh, to portion of First Avenue. Item 19, authorizing commercial property fund loan at 4601 Lindell Avenue North. And item 20, authorizing commercial property development loan at 600 West Lake Street. I will move approval for all items. Thank you, Madam President. Um, Council Member um, uh, Osmond has um, moved approval of this report. Um, Council Member Chug Tai, do you have any comments? I'm sorry. Um, Council Member Rainville, and then Payne, and then Chug Tai. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to pull items number 16 and 17 uh, for discussion. Council Member Rainville has pulled item 16 and 17 for discussion. Um, Council Member Payne. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to pull item number two for a separate vote. Council Member Payne has requested to um, pull item number two for a separate vote. And um, Council Member Chuck Tai. Uh, well, I just wanted to call attention to three items that are really exciting for the 10th Ward. Um, and those are item number uh, 12, which is a comprehensive plan amendment for a location that's going to be part of the expansion of um, Simpson. Um, Simpson Church and the, the shelter that they have. Um, it's really close to where I live and it's a really big deal um, and something that uh, they've been working on for a couple of years and it's finally coming to fruition. Item number 14 in the redevelopment of Kmart, um, which is going to affect uh, a few of our wards but is, is housed entirely in the 10th Ward and doing some really exciting community engagement. Um, over the course of this summer and, and funding that, and then um, some um, commercial property development fund money for um, a new uh, business that's going to be coming um, on, on West Lake Street. So just wanted to raise gratitude and, and call attention to something that's, that's really exciting that's happening. Thank you, Council Member Chuck Tai. And I do want to echo um, your uh, comments around Item number 14, the, the former Kmart site. Um, this is a project that um, has probably been, have been trying to change since its inception. Um, and it is finally coming to fruition uh, with the initiation of a community engagement process and the demolition of the building itself. Um, there have been many, many 
many administrations and council offices that have um, worked on this issue throughout the years. And so um, congratulations to our CPED staff uh, for, for doing all of the extraordinary work to bring this uh, project to this point. And uh, really excited about the future. Um, are there any other comments? I think Councilmember Goodman and Vitao um, are in queue. Thank you, Madam President. I wanted to make a comment about items three and four to start. I want to just point out the incredible work of Alfred Port and his team who have gotten us to the point where our Minneapolis Homes program is doing exactly what the previous council and staff intended it to do. This is a program that is selling lots that the city owns for home ownership that will be affordable with a preference policy that will mean that folks who live in the neighborhoods where these homes will be built will get preference in terms of buying these homes. Some of the pro homes and lots have a purchase subsidy to allow lower income families to be able to purchase these homes. Others don't require that purchase subsidy, subsidy because of the cost of construction and land and those will be sold also to families at 80% uh, of area median income or lower. I do want to point out that the previous group of city council members made a commitment to ensuring that home ownership in the fifth ward and in the fourth ward was a priority that affordable home ownership for families who have not had the opportunity to purchase homes was a top priority and this is the result of that incredible work 85 units mainly single family homes, some duplexes and triplexes, will be sold to families who live in those neighborhoods who need to take that path and want to take that path towards home ownership. I think it's an incredible victory and I commend our staff for their amazing work. I'd also like to briefly comment on items five and six uh, as well. Mm -hmm. um, this morning, Councilmember Osman and the committee are bringing forward the mayor's recommendation for the nominations of Saray Garnett Haluli and Andrea Brennan. I have had the good fortune to work with these two women for an extended period of time, and I have been nothing other than impressed and grateful for the work that they have done on behalf of the city. These two jobs, regulatory services and CPED, sit in a very difficult place and a place of great emotion and a place where there's great opportunity. Everything from renter protections to working with the unsheltered homeless population to dealing with rental licensing and rental evictions, home ownership, affordable housing, economic inclusion, workforce development, and licensing and business development. These are areas of the city that we have the opportunity to step up and show who we are as a city. And these two women have led the way with incredible teams of workers who have been doing the work that the council as a policy making body has asked them to do. We are grateful for your service. I don't see Saray usually, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you ladies. You're really incredible people. I feel very honored to have the opportunity to work with you. I know all of us that serve on this committee feel the exact same way. I congratulate you and I thank you for continuing this important work on behalf of our constituents. Thank you, Councilmember Goodman, um, and I concur with your comments. Councilmember Vitao. Thank you, Madam Chair. I wanted to speak to item 18, the street naming of Prince Rogers Nelson Way. Yay, us. I'm <laughs> sure I'm my mother's favorite child today, and this is a hard thing because I'm a middle child. Usually, we're not the favorite. So <laughs> she, um, I, I just want to say she, I. Uh, the morning that this was announced, that this was becoming before the council, she texted me at 610 in the morning and said, you need to make sure that all 12 of your friends on that council votes for this because we need this street name and change. And just a little bit more history, I moved to Minneapolis in the 80s because my mother's um, passion for the movie Purple Rain. And um, so that was all she knew about Minneapolis was that Purple Rain was filmed here. I ended up here, been here for 35 years. And so this is a big deal to my mother. I am so proud to be voting for this today and to make her happy in this way. We're all wearing purple in celebration of this resolution. So thank you to my colleagues. And this has to be unanimous or I won't be the favorite. <laughs> thank you. 
Thank you, council member. And um, I'm pretty sure Prince is going to get a unanimous vote on this. Um, <laughs> colleagues, we are... Uh, council member Ellison is in queue. Apologies to put my name in queue a little late. Um, uh, I definitely want to... Um, Concur with Councilmember Goodman about the, deport, the, the 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 appointments that we're we're going to be voting on today, um, you know. And I also wanted to speak to the housing, and I feel like the uh, uh, the housing programs, and I feel like the, it's all kind of related. Uh, the, this earlier this week, um, I was at, uh, at an inspection for you know uh, Northside Home, dealing with some some difficult landlord issues. Uh, was able to see uh, our our reg service one of our reg service members out there working with tenants, and it was just such a uh, and I was invited by the tenant um, to to come and and participate, and uh, obviously out in our communities the the tenants who are uh, dealing with difficult issues in our community are, are are their best advocates, but without people in our departments who really care who really are going to put you know, uh, 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 a lot of attention to detail in supporting our residents, a lot of these tenants find themselves overwhelmed by some of the experiences that they have with their housing situation. And we don't get to create a department like that without the leadership um, uh, 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 you know, of Saray, of Andrea. It's, it's a huge, huge deal. Um, and I, I wanted to speak also to, to our housing programs and to the preference policy, just because I, I, I remember uh, you know, my first year in office being really, really curious uh, about diving into the weeds of different kinds of housing policy. How can we support tenants better? How can we, you know, both uh, uh, lean into um, supporting our tenants and their agency of wanting to own a home one day or, or whatever, while also uh, making sure that we weren't gentrifying neighborhoods or, or generating displacement. Um, and we were in Austin and we saw this sort of this right to return policy, Andrea, Andrea Brennan and I, uh, and we were able to see uh, what it looked like to, to uh, for a community where a lot of people had been displaced and priced out of their neighborhood, uh, what it looked like for the city to say, you know, we're going to create a pathway for people to to move back into their neighborhood, to have some to have some equity, to have some stake here, uh, and so to see. Uh, uh, just a couple of years later that, that this preference policy your team, that your team built uh, is active and that we're going to be seeing um, uh, people all over the city, but certainly on the north side, I'm biased, you know, north side, whoop, whoop. Um, uh, we're going to be seeing people benefiting from, from those programs is, is a huge deal, and, 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 and it doesn't happen by accident. I think that's the point I want to make. Neither one of these things happen by accident. So, um, so thank you to my colleagues, and, and, and thank you to the tremendous leadership uh, from our departments. Thank you, uh, Council Member Ellison. Are there any other comments, reflections, congratulations, et cetera? Um, so I do want to just confirm for my colleagues that we are voting on items 1, 3 through 15, and 18 through 20. Items 2, 16, and 17 have been pulled for separate votes. Um, and so hopefully everyone is clear, and I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Warlaba. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Osmond. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellis. Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries. And next we will start with item number two. And I will um, call on Councilmember Payne to um, lead that discussion. Thank you, Madam President. I pulled this item for a separate vote um, because. Um, I actually really appreciate Councilmember Goodman's education around some of these, uh, the, the contribution some of these bonds um, play for our revenues. Um, I just don't, it doesn't sit well with me for us to benefit from financial innovations that are um, contributing to some of the financial crisis within our public school system. And so, you know, I don't know what the right solution is, but I just don't want to support this as part of a system that is needs to really be rethought if we need to kind of come up with other financial innovations to you know hit our bottom line i am happy to jump into that brainstorming process but um i don't want it to happen as it's related to our public school system
Councilmember Asman. Uh, th thank you, Madam President. I just want to kind of really highlight how important charter schools play in minority, black, and um, immigrant communities in our cities. Um, and we have to do everything we can to make sure that we are supporting charter schools. The failure of Minneapolis public schools cannot be, you know, um, looked at uh, as reason for, for, for having a charter school. Charter schools are, have been great, especially in uh, immigrant communities. And, you know, um, Hiawatha Academies is large, largely minority Latino students that have, uh, that have go that I have visited uh, before, uh, before I joined the council, and um, just kind of want to highlight that um, uh, charter schools have been uh, one of the success stories of immigrant community in Minneapolis. Thank you, Councilmember Asman. Councilmember Ellison. Uh, just wanted to, to, to ask the question, uh, just because I, I know this issue has come up a few times, is is there some kind of staff direction that needs to be generated out of this out of this discussion? I, you know, I, I say that as somebody who unequivocally supports pu our public schools, but also has understands that the Minneapolis City Council is not going to, you know, globally end uh, charter schools in this it, within the city within the region. Right, the, these things aren't going to happen from from this dais. Um, I, I also find myself not fully knowing what the impact is, right? The, the direct correlation, correlation between us issuing these bonds, you know, what impact it might have on public schools. And so um, I'm, I'm interested in having just some better information so that we can know whether, whether there is a one-to-one -one correlation and if there is, what kind of policy change we need to be made. But staff bring us these recommendations uh, and, uh, and I, don't wanna find, I don't want us to be voting for them or against them arbitrarily uh, is, is I guess my point. And so I'm interested to know, you know, uh, if, if there is some kind of um, discussion that can be had between Council Member Payne and, and staff around bringing a staff direction that would help us understand this dynamic, this, this, this financial relationship better, because at the end of the day, that's, that's, that, that, that basically is what it is. Thank you, Council Member Ellison. I put myself in queue. Um, just to speak to this issue a little bit, and I wanna start by saying I have 100% respect for teachers. I would not be here but for public schools. However, we must recognize that public schools are failing our children woefully. And we need other options for our young people to learn. Charter schools are play a part in that. Uh, ecosystem. And so I, I, I can't support this. Um, this uh, if, if you are making a motion to, uh, to not support funding um, this charter school, I, I, I can't support that. Our children need multiple options in order to be able to educate themselves, to be able to survive in this society. And, you know, unfortunately, public schools, particularly here in Minneapolis, are failing our children dramatically. The numbers bear it out. So you don't have to take my word for it. Look at the education gaps and um, we, we must have alternatives for our young people. Um, and many times, black and brown families don't have the option to go to public, I mean, private schools, which a lot of other families have. And so charter schools play a role in filling that gap. Um, Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I see Council Member Goodman in queue after me, so maybe she can address this in her comments. But reading the RCA, this is a refinancing. This is not an expansion or any additional charter schools. And I will note that one of these listed on the RCA, Hiawatha Academies, which is very highly regarded and awarded is in Ward 12. I've toured their campus and I have seen how the student population is almost entirely uh, children of color and uh, predominantly low income families and how this school works, for instance, to one of the things that impressed me so much was the pantry that they have 
for families to come and take home food over the weekend and at the end of school days in order to ensure that those students are fed. So if I'm understanding this correctly, and Councilmember Goodman can correct me if I'm wrong here, but this would not add any additional charter schools. This would merely free up funds, which then the schools could put into the classroom to benefit those students and do things like send them home with meals. And that's, that's where, if we're talking about potentially voting against this or voting this down, the question I have is, what is the outcome? If we are making a decision here that is not changing an expansion or contraction of charter schools, but the outcome is going to be affecting students or families, I have concerns with that. So I, that is something I would love clarity on, and I know Councilmember Goodman uh, has deep experience on that, so maybe she could speak to that. Councilmember Goodman, did you have a... Oh, I, see you I'm in, I am in line. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Councilmember Johnson, you are correct. This particular issue in front of us is a refinancing, um, but I don't want us to think about this, and I guess everyone can think about it however they want. I would urge us to not think about this as a we like charter schools or we don't. So I'll go back to the explanation that I have been giving since the very first time that Council Member Wansley Warlaba brought up this question, and then it offered her an opportunity to meet the charter school folks in her ward where she had the question. We are a sub allocator of bonds that allows us to issue bonds for public charter schools. Why do we do this? Because we get a bond fee from all of the bonds that we issue. And we use those bond fees, and this is a $19 million project, so you can assume it's going to be a fairly hefty fee. I'm gonna guess it's maybe even 1%, somewhere in that range. Um, so we're talking you know, over a million dollars that we put into our 2% loan pro program, our commercial corridor programs, and all of the other programs that we use to support small businesses in our economic development program. If we were to say we don't want to issue these bonds, somebody else will. Either the county, potentially the state, there are other sub allocators. And so essentially we need to think about this as though we're a business, we're a financial institution issuing bonds that we've been given permission by the state to allocate and we then collect the fees instead of a bank. And then we do good things with those fees in order to move the programs or projects forward. Most of these schools are already operating in a building and all they want to do is purchase the building that they're already operating in. And in some cases, the public school system has sold buildings to public charter schools. These are not religious schools, these are not private schools, in order to ensure that they can dispose of some of their buildings, but they still remain an amenity as a school in a neighborhood. So this, I wouldn't think of this as, is Hiawatha Academies good or bad, or are charter schools good or bad? This is really a financing mechanism. We act as a financing authority, and we use the money in a, a more progressive way than a bank would in order to further our other economic development goals. Thank you for that clarity, Councilmember Goodman. Um, Councilmember Wansley Warlaba. Thank you, uh, Chair Jenkins. Um, as someone who actually has a background here, um, specifically with education, and I've had the opportunity to study um, districts, look at New Orleans, for instance, which is now 99% uh, privatized, largely ran by charter schools in the wake of Hurricane Katrina. Um, there's also tons of national data that has shown that school choice is not equated to equity for black and brown families. Uh, many of the disparities that we see within our public schools are very present even in our charter schools when it comes to expulsion rates, when it comes to academic rates. So this, this myth that um, having expansive choice, um, it means better academic outcomes for our students of color is just simply not true. Um, and I do want to note this is an uh, opportunity, and I, I echo sentiments uh, raised by Council Member uh, Ellison about maybe looking at a staff directive to see how we can use this innovative funding to also support our public schools. The reason why, as you noted, Council Member uh, Goodman, that public schools are selling off their buildings is because they're seeing decreases in enrollment. They're seeing decreases in their overall funding. So of course you have to, you know, un uh, unload some of your capital assets and who better than those who are helping um, lead your enrollment crisis, the charter schools themselves. So to say that this is an apolitical issue, 
no. Um, and I also would love to echo uh, the opportunity, Council Member uh, Johnson. Um, I got to work on a campaign to make uh, three full service community schools happen in Minneapolis, Green Central, Bethune, City View, places that have medical services for their students, food services, they have social workers, they have employment um, services located in their schools. These are public schools. And we know if we invest in the holistic supports that's needed for you know, our students and their families' well-beings, that does not just have to happen in charter schools alone. They're happening in our public schools and would love to organize a tour for you and many of our council members um, to see the great work that's happening within our public schools when we put our dollars behind our, our, our oral sentiments that we support education. Um, so I also will not be voting in favor of this. I would like to work with council member, um, I'm blanking on your name right now. <laughs> Pain, <laughs> pain <laughs> to figure out how we can use these measures, these, these public incentives to support public institutions. Seeing no further uh, colleagues in the queue, I will ask the clerk to call a roll on item. Well, I don't know. Is There's not a motion. So this is just a conversation, but we have not voted on item number two, so. The motion was made by Councilmember Osmond to approve this item. It was pulled for discussion. The pending motion, therefore, is to approve item number two. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Uh, please call the roll. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember wansley Council Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Osmond. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Nay. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Nay. Councilmember Chavez. Nay. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are nine ayes and four nays. That item carries, and the next items are 16 and 17, and I will invite Councilmember Rainbill to speak to those items. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I would like to uh, read uh, some information into the record about this property at 635 Van Buren. Uh, this is an email that the former council member sent to Chris Jones, who is the president of the St. Anthony West neighborhood in August of 2019. So for my colleagues, please remember that date of August of 19. And this, this is from the former council member. Your timing is remarkable. The, uh, and let me explain, this email was in, to speak in opposition of the, the uh, built form change for the 2040 plan. Your timing is remarkable. We were meeting with Heather Worthington, who was a city staff member in charge of the, of the 2040 plan. We were meeting with Heather Worthington when you emailed. All are agreed that Van Buren should be treated like all the other streets in St. Anthony East neighborhood. Transit four along Broadway, and interior three for the rest. Once the Met Council approves a 2040 plan, probably in late September or so, staff will compile a list of small technical changes like this one from around the city and submit them all together as an amendment, a pretty straightforward process that the city does quarterly or so as various land use changes shift. Expect that to happen in, in January. In the meantime, if you're hearing people sniffing around the land sales on your block, you can tell them that the 2040 plan contains an error and Van Buren will be treated like the rest of the neighborhood. That would be the built form three or the uh, interior three. This mail, email was sent in August of 2019 before the Minneapolis 2040 plan was adopted. The city council adopted the plan on October 25th, 2019 and the former Council member voted for it without proposing any changes. This is a complete failure of an elected official and of a staff member of the city to honor their words, to listen to the neighbors who, who put in two years of community engagement for the 2040 plan, and they essence were the neighbors were lied to on Van Buren. The community tried to work with the developer to lower the density of this from four stories to three. They were not listened to. They, tr they continued to, uh, to try to com come to compromise, and that just never happened. The, the developer lawyered up. And I'm gonna, the last email I'm going to read into the record is from the neighbor right next to this project. This is from Emily Carr. 
I wanted to share that if this project is built, it will not allow us to add solar, pa solar panels to our home that we have been considering and saving for. All of the solar resources would be used by the apartment building and block solar energy to us. If you ever lived in a very old home, you can understand our concern for flooding. Our home was built in 1910 and has stacked stone foundation. We can almost be guaranteed that if a commercial building is built five feet from us, we will have flooding. We have not been provided a reasonable solution for our garage access. The building would block reasonable entry to the garage. We have spent too much money that we don't have on lawyers' fees and engineering reports. So this is going to end up in the court of law, whether we vote for this, uh, whatever way we vote for this, the neighbors have their legal rights being trampled on. This is a failure from this, this city council. It's a failure from our city staff. I ask you to vote no on this today. Thank you, Council Member Rainville. Um, are there any other comments? Uh, city Attorney, uh, Assistant City Attorney uh, Eric Nielsen. Uh, thank you, Council President Jenkins. Just, just one point. Um, uh, there's a really large record for this matter, and it is a quasi-judicial matter, as the council members know. And so the record is closed at the conclusion of the public hearing in committee. I believe the, the emails that Council Member Rainville read are in the record. I, it's such a big record, I would have to go back and look. I'm, I'm putting faith in that, that that is not new uh, information for the record. However, uh, I am obliged to give one point of clarification. Um, those emails reference uh, statements uh, which might be deemed promises by a former elected official. Those statements or promises did not result in changes to the adopted policy plans of the city. Um, uh, and so while I understand that neighbors may be perturbed and angry, the, the promises alone do not have any relevance to the legal standing for the matter and the decision at hand. Thank you, Mr. Nielsen. Uh, Councilmember Ellison. Yeah, I, you know, I have to take to say anything. I, I guess, I guess if I was going to say anything, I, I, I think that we are, Mr. Nielsen's right, we're, we have the substantive matter before us. And I think that while those of us who have beat incumbents might feel very proud of ourselves, I would urge us all to not sit up here and complain about, uh, 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 you know, Hillary Clinton's emails or whatever, right? We've got uh, the issue before us, staff's making a recommendation, and I just think it's inappropriate for us to sort of uh, uh, sit out here and stump on an election that we already won. Uh, and I feel urged to say that just because I, I, I really didn't appreciate the comments. If, we, if you have something to say about the substantive matter here before us in, in terms of the adopted policy, that's fine. But, uh, but, but relitigating uh, old gripes uh, just feels inappropriate to me. So I thought I'd, I just felt urged uh, to say that. Thank you, Council Member. Are there any other comments? Seeing none, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. And Madam President, just to On clarify. Item number two. Are we taking the I'm sorry, item 16 and 17. And 17 together. Yes. Councilmember Rainville. No. Councilmember Wansley Warlebach. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. No. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Osmond. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shuktai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. No. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 10 ayes and three nays. That item carries, and we have now dispensed with the business uh, inspections um, and housing and zoning committee report. Um, I do want to say congratulations to. Uh, to our nominees, Ray uh, Garnett Rutuli and Andrea Brennan on their uh, appointment. And um, with that, our next committee report is now the report from the Committee of the Whole, which will pre be presented by Chair Council Vice President Palmasano. Thank you, Madam President. Um, at the Committee of the Whole meeting on Tuesday, we 
discussed and had a public hearing on the appointment of our city coordinator um, as its chair. I had intended to, and what I would like to do is to make a motion to confirm the mayor's appointment of Heather Johnson to the appointment of city coordinator, but I'm not going to do that. Um, we've all gotten a tremendous amount of feedback from the public and from others on this appointment, and I suggest that now we honor this moment and give us as policy makers that space with one another to confer for a bit of additional time. Um, to, there was a lot of confusion at the end of the meeting about what this position was and how long it was for. It is a four-year appointment going back to January, but I need to reiterate what the city clerk said. This position should not exist in just a few months' time. Um, to the interest that we heard from so many about making sure we have an open process for this internal position, I'd suggest they be arguing for that on the future chief administrative officer position. So let me reiterate, this position will not exist if we can jump into the important government restructuring work. The will of the voters in the last election. Until we get through that, we will continue to have a lot of confusion and, and people taking opportunities to jump in and, and try to, like my colleague said, relitigate past decisions. Uh, that will not make us successful here and it will not move us forward here. Um, that is the future of our city's structure. I urge my colleagues and I applaud others who have argued for an open process, but for our future position. I support that. I think others on this dais support that. Um, so I think we need an opportunity to cut this confusion. I don't think it is fair to our interim city coordinator to tangle her up in this. So I would suggest, and I would like to make this motion instead, that we hold this item here at council for one cycle to allow space for my colleagues to explore the issues that were raised importantly this week um, and to hear all of the voices in the room. During Ms. Johnson's relatively brief tenure here, she's proven herself to be an affected and committed, effective and committed public servant at every level. She has every quality a city would want and has demonstrated her capabilities here these past few months. She's shown her ability to step up and tackle important issues throughout the enterprise, like leading us through some of our work, like improving our emergency response plans. She does this work with an emphasis on equity and bringing departments together for the benefit of every Minneapolis resident. I know Ms. Johnson previously from her time on our city's audit committee and from her reputation as the city's former budget director and a number of leadership positions in neighboring municipalities. Ms. Johnson is an incredibly qualified candidate who brings the kind of well-rounded and multifaceted experiences professionally and personally that are hard to come by for these kinds of appointments. We need a coordinator who excels at moving not just initiatives, but entire enterprises forward. And I don't know of many other candidates who can boast the kind of resume that Ms. Johnson brings to the table. So I am thankful that the mayor has put forward such an impressive candidate. I am excited personally to, export, to support Ms. Johnson for that permanent position of city coordinator for as long as it exists, which I think if we do our work together, will be just a few months time. So my motion that I will need a second on is to delay this one cycle so that we can all continue to have conversations. There was a lot of, um, there were a lot of things bubbling and percolating these past 24 hours and I am just seeing this motion um, by council member Payne for the first time right now. So that is my motion, if I could have a second. Second. Colleagues, we have a motion and a proper second. Um, and now I will invite Council Member Payne to speak to that motion. Thank you, Madam President. Yeah, I handed out a motion to address some of the concerns raised by VP Palmasano. Um, and I, I think what we experienced in the public hearing on Tuesday was unprecedented for this institution to see so many staff speak up about the conditions of what it's like to work here. Um, 
and there was discussion of a uh, HR investigation uh, within the coordinator's office. And I think it would actually be quite appropriate to po postpone consideration for the leadership of this department um, until that investigation is concluded so that we can come out of that process much more whole. And so my motion is to postpone the consideration of the appointment of Heather Johnson uh, until such time that that human resources department investigation uh, has been concluded. Are you, are you offering this as a substitute motion yes. or an amendment to the current substitute motion, motion. We have before us? Substitute motion. Thank you. Um, Councilmember Payne has issued a substitute motion that we all have before us. Um, is there a second? We have a motion and a proper second. Um, and to be clear, this motion coincides with the, the motion from Councilmember Palmasano in that it is a motion to postpone for one cycle. However, Councilmember Payne's motion includes an investigation uh, led by the Human Resources Department um, it, it doesn't um, indicate when we would want to hear back from the um, Human Resources Department on that investigation, but um, we do have this motion before us, and I see that we have uh, Council Vice President Palmasano and Council Member Johnson. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would like to speak against the substitute motion um, and say that maybe it makes sense. Maybe next cycle it makes sense to do something like this. Uh, but we don't know that. There are a lot of legalities mm -hmm. here, and this substitute motion is incredibly indefinite. Um, and I don't find that to be fair to somebody. I don't think that's fair to anybody who comes as a public servant to serve our city. Um, and I. I won't be able to support the substitute motion, but maybe after discussion, if we find there to be reasons to do so, maybe I could get comfortable with this next cycle. Sure. Uh, Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. And since Council Member Payne, who made the motion, sits right next to me, I leaned over and I said, do you want to respond to that? <laughs> and so I'm going to defer to Council Member Payne. Yeah, I think um, I, I met with, uh, Attorney Nielsen and with the clerk's office in preparing this motion. Um, and I did ask about a, a, a definite timeline on this. Um, and this is the motion that came out of that collaboration with those two offices. Um, I think that uh, having this uh, a cycle delay at least allows us to have a much more in-depth understanding of what would be entailed and maybe have a more definitive timeline for an investigation. Um, and that's something that I would be open to considering in our next cycle. So I can, I can move to pull this substitute. So you have, to be clear, you are um, rescinding your motion, which brings us back to the original motion to postpone for one cycle um, offered by Councilmember Palmasano. Is there any further discussion? Uh, Councilmember Wansley Warlaba. Thank you, Chair Jenkins. Um, I, while I agree with the, the sentiments both raised in Councilmember Payne's and uh, Council Vice President Palmasano's motions for postponing, I absolutely support that component of both motions. Um, to link it to government structure and, and as if we know how that's gonna pan out in three weeks as well, I think that's also a very false assumption. Um, just as much as we know there has to be a conclusion to an HR investigation. But nevertheless, I think it's very clear as we see in the chambers right now, uh, our staff, the public would like us to take more time to consider um, the impact of this position as it currently stands, the four-year permanent position, not the future position or whatever the case that I think you're referencing uh, to the possible uh, reorganization of our government 
uh, Council Vice President Palmasano. But if there's, yes, I ac completely support the aspect of taking another cycle for this. Thank you, Council Member um, Wansley Worldwide. And to be clear, I, we don't have a choice in this government structure. Our community um, voted to support that referendum. So we must create uh, a new government structure. What that structure is, um, we don't fully know, but we're certainly that it's not going to be the structure that we are currently finding ourselves operating in. Um, Council Member Payne. Thank you, Madam President. I, I, I just wanted to say for the public record, um, the voters did decide on a, a, a choice in, uh, in November, and that was for an executive mayor and a legislative council with a city auditor. We're operating under the structure that the voters decided on already right now. Madam Chair, I've already spoken twice and I don't intend to speak again, but I do just want to point out to my to all of us here and to keep us centered on the, the motion in front of us. This is about the appointment of Heather Johnston and we let's not we there's so much we could say about government structure and let's have those conversations even as much as you know, starting tomorrow um, again, but let's not, this is about an appointment of a person. Thank you. I see that Mayor Fry is in queue. Welcome, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Madam President and Council Members. Uh, I, I do support the motion to delay uh, the two-week period. Uh, now, I also support an investigation. Now, I think an investigation is to get to a specificity of facts that apply specifically to Heather Johnston. Uh, if we all were to have a vote right now on whether systemic racism exists in our society, in our world, and specifically in our city enterprise, it would be a 13 to zero vote, and we would expedite the signature that I would put on the paper. If we were to vote right now as to whether there were issues that we all still needed to sort out in our city government, in the city coordinator's office, in MPD, in every single department that we have in the city, uh, I believe there would be a 13 to zero vote and I would sign it immediately. Uh, that's not the question that we're asking, however, with Heather Johnston. Uh, Heather has devoted her entire life to public service. She's worked her way up through many different departments and many different municipalities with ethics, through collaboration, integrity, uh, and really, really hard work. The truth is that I have not heard many specific allegations against Heather Johnston. There are conclusions that have been drawn. There are, there are conclusions that people have come to and we value and respect people's perspectives. But as it applies to Heather, and as it applies to her appointment, which as was correctly stated, will only last a, a, a matter of, uh, the position itself will only likely last a matter of three or four months. Uh, that's I think what needs to really be dug into. Um, and so that's why I support the delay. Um, I support an investigation so that we can get to a specificity of fact here. Uh, and I'll also note just how important that this position is to our administration and the day-to-day -day functions of our government. It is correct that the voters on November 2nd decided that we will have a clear executive in the mayor and a clear legislative body in the council. That was passed on November 2nd. That form of government took effect on December 2nd. However, that form of government has not been instituted in full. We need to be very, very clear on that. There aren't other governments out there that I'm aware of where a mayor has 20-some direct reports. That is not a sustainable approach and is why I'm insisting that we move expeditiously to get us to a point where I can do my job as well as I possibly can. I hope that it is not the goal of anybody 
any council members or otherwise to make me do my job less well. And if in fact that is not the goal, if in fact you care about the day-to-day -day operations of our city, then we need to have a city coordinator in place that can help coordinate and administer our government for the next several months until the next uh, form of the next structure of government is ultimately decided on and voted on by the council. And so again, for the sake of specificity, I support the delay. For the sake of specificity, I support an investigation into the specific underpinning facts. Uh, and I think that that is, at least for today, a good conclusion to move forward on. I support the underlying motion. Thank you, Mayor Fry. Next in queue is Council Member Chuck Tai. Um, a, a couple of things. I uh, want to actually start with, uh, like, I think I was ready to be supportive of this, this motion uh, to delay a cycle, but we've got word week coming up next week, then we've got another two weeks before we would take this up again. Why would we delay making a decision three weeks when the mayor himself is telling us that we potentially will have a new government structure and, and this position might not even exist three months later? That's like almost a third of the time that we are taking up just to delay uh, a vote when we just did a public hearing two days ago. And like we should be making, if we made people come in here and sit in front of us and spend three hours testifying, we can, we can do the work of making tough choices today and just taking the vote right now. We have people sitting in here in front of us right now waiting for us to make a decision, continuing to delay, just knowing that this position may not even exist in three months, right? Is, it just seems a little silly to me at this point. And that being said, you know, I just want to like push back on this piece around there were no specific references to uh, interim coordinator Johnston made in the allegations by by staff. I, you know, read them myself. I've read every single page and her name and allegations that reference her specifically have been brought up multiple times. So, you know, like you don't have to agree with every single thing that's included in that letter, but to but to say that the letter itself does not have any specific allegations towards our current interim coordinator. It's, it's just false. Um, and, and then with, you know, I think all of that being said, I, I understand where the will of this body might be, but I just, I just think at this point it's silly for us to delay three weeks when this position might not exist after three months. Thank you, Council Member. Um, I, I, I would really ask that we don't, uh, prioritize uh, people's motivations um, in in these conversations. Councilmember Goodman. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to call the question. Uh, Councilmember Goodman has called the question on the motion we have before us, um, and I believe we need to vote on that. Um, and seeing no other. Mm -hmm. Comments, I will Madam, ask the clerk to call the roll on the. Madam President, if no one objects, because Councilmember Goodwin was the last in the queue, can we just move to the question? Um, well, now, Councilmember Johnson, there has been a motion to call the question, so. Madam Bill President, there was, no, there was no second to that motion to call the question, and as Councilmember Johnson just said, if we're moving to the vote on the underlying motion, we can do that right now. Um, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Warlaba. Nay. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Nay. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. And there are 11 ayes and two nays. That item carries and that the vote um, to consider the appointment of interim director, city coordinator, um, Heather Johnson has been postponed for one cycle. And um, 
So, um, do we need to vote on the committee's report, or was that? That was the vote. That was the vote. Our next uh, report is from our Policy, Government, and Oversight Committee, and that report will be presented by the Chair, Council Member Ellison. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> the Policy and Government Oversight Committee has 19 items uh, that it is recommending for approval. Item number one is the appointment of the City Assessor, Rebecca Malmquist. Item number two is confirming the Transgender Equity Council appointment. Item number three is authorizing collective bargaining, bargaining agreements with Ask Me Attorney Unit uh, it, uh, for two contracts, 2020 through 2021 and 2022 through 2024. Item number four is the passage of a resolution transferring funds for the Housing Rent Stabilization Work Group. Item number five is the passage of a resolution transferring funds from the 2022 City Coordinators Division of Sustainability to the Health Department for Green Cost Share and STEM Pathway Programs. Item number six is authorizing an agreement with the 927 Building LLC and Tri Construction for the uh, for space at the 927 West Broadway Building. Item number seven is accepting a bid for a Minneapolis Convention Center elevator modernization. Item number eight is accepting a bid for the 2022 Large Diameter Cured In Place Pipe Project. Item number nine is accepting a bid for Target Center Freight Elevator Modernization. Item number 10 is accepting a bid for the 16th Avenue North Safe Routes to Schools project. Item number 11 is accepting a bid for the Fridley Campus Medium Voltage Adjustable Frequency Drives and Variable Frequency Drives. Item number 12 is authorizing contract with Canva uh, US Inc. for design software services. Item 13 is authorizing contract amendment with Canal Street Limited Partnership for neighborhood and community relations uh, leased office space in the Crown Roller Mill building at uh, 105 Fifth Avenue South. Item number 14 is authorizing the contract amendments with TXI Systems Inc, DBA Tow Exchange Inc for towing management software services. Item number 15 is authorizing contracts with the Cleaver Architecture LLC for impound lot improvement project. Item number 16 is authorizing exclusivity agreement extension with US Solar for the purchase of renewable energy credits. Item number 17 is approving a legal settlement, the uh, City of Minneapolis, sorry, Minneapolis City Parking LLC versus the City of Minneapolis. Item number 18 is approving a legal settlement, uh, Jaleel Stallings versus Andrew Biddle, um, and that is uh, uh, further legal fees. And item number 19 is uh, approving a legal settlement of the Catholic, Catholic Mutual Relief Society of America versus the City of Minneapolis. And with that, Madam President, I will move approval of all items. Thank you, Chair Ellison. Um, Council Member Wansley Warlava. Thank you, Chair Jenkins. I just wanted to speak to um, item number 18. Many people here might be familiar with Mr. Stallings' case, and I just want to highlight that this is exactly the kind of brutal, inhumane, and racist behavior that we are looking to Mayor Fry to address as a sole authority figure over MPD. This payout is a, a avoidable use of taxpayers' dollars. And I truly wish Mr. Stalin all the best and hope as he tries to recover from the unconscious, unconscionable experience that MPD officers put him through. So I just wanted to make that comment, especially looking at we're still two years from this taking place, not only to Mr. Stalin's, but this happened in the wake of the preventable murder of George Floyd as well. Thank you, Council Member. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Wansley Warlava. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Payne. Aye. Council Member Koski. Aye. Council Member Shugtai. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That item carries, and um, that report is adopted. Our next committee report is the um, uh, Public Health and Safety Committee, and that will be presented by the chair, Council Member Vita. 
Thank you, Madam President. The Public Health and Safety Committee has four items that it is recommending for approval. Item one is authorizing contracts with neighborhood organizations qualifying for the Neighborhood 2020 Shared Resources and Collaborations Fund. Item two is authorizing a site agreement with Reading and Math Inc. DBA AMPAC for AmeriCorps members. Item three is authorizing a host site agreement with the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency for Minnesota Green Corps program members. And item four is accepting a 2021 Justice Assistance Grant for Police Department and City Attorney's Office support. With that, Madam President, I move approval of all items. Thank you, Councilmember Vital. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Warlaba. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Osmond. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellis Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That report is adopted, and our next committee report is from the Public Works and Infrastructure Committee. That report will be presented by the Vice Chair, Councilmember Koski. Thank you, Madam President. The Public Works and Infrastructure Committee will be bringing forward five items for consideration at this week's council meeting. Um, number one, passage of ordinance revising the water and sewer code. Number two, approving the reallocation of funds in the 2022 capital improvement program. Number three, authorizing a master partnership agreement with Minnesota Department of Transportation. Number four, passage of resolution supporting the West Broadway route alignment for the Blue Line light rail transit extension and submitting city of Minneapolis comments on the route modification report to Henneman County and Metropolitan Council. And number five, layout approval easements repealing a one-way street and a staff direction relating to the Hennepin Avenue South Street reconstruction project. I'll move approval of items one through four, and I'd like to pull item five for further discussion. Um, thank you, Council Member. Um, I see we have Council Member Chug Tai in queue for discussion on this item or this report. Uh, this was just on uh, a change that we wanted to make to item number five that both uh, Chair or Vice Chair Koski and, and Chair Johnson and uh, the director are aware of, so I'll hold until then. Thank you, uh, Council Member Chuck Tai. Um, is there any further discussion on items one through four? Council Member Ellison. I uh, just wanted to uh, almost uh, Miss, miss my chance here. Just wanted to speak really quickly to uh, item number four. Uh, it's regarding the, the blue line. I uh, really want to thank the committee for, um, I'm not on the committee, uh, but the, the but staff and the committee worked to make some, some changes to that resolution. It's a big deal to the neighbors, not only along West Broadway, but also around the original line uh, it, to be represented in, in, in our resolution here. Um, for those that don't know, and I'll, I'll tell the, the, the criminally short version of the story, um, but originally the blue line was going to go down uh, Olson Highway, um, and the community felt the effects of, of, of impending um, uh, uh, you know, transit-oriented development, and they didn't get that development. They're not going to get that development. They also missed out on, on that safety along Olson Highway. And so the Harrison neighborhoods, uh, Heritage Park, a number of neighbors have really band together to advocate for themselves to say, hey, look, the line might not be coming down here. Uh, it, you know, they're, they're all very happy to, to see that we're still going to get the Blue Line infrastructure in North Minneapolis, but they also want to make sure that they're getting some kind of remedy for uh, what they experienced with, with the prospective uh, transit without getting the transit. And so I want to thank staff for working with me. I want to thank the committee for working with me despite me not being on the committee and uh, really excited to get to this work and to, to see this infrastructure really benefit um, the north side and, and our city as a whole. Thank you, Council Member. Um, is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? I will ask the clerk to call the roll on items one through four. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Horlava. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. 
Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries. And next, I will invite Councilmember uh, Koski to speak to item number five. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, yes, polling number five, because as Councilmember Chugtai uh, alluded to, we have had some discussion about moving this to a delay to bring back, to, or not a delay, but bring it back to um, our committee. So I'd like to welcome, I know Councilmember Chugtai and Councilmember uh, Johnson may have some thoughts on that as well. Uh, thank you. Um, I know I was in queue, so I'll, I'll speak to this um, and make a, a formal motion, I think. Um, so uh, we received uh, a memo from the city attorney's office at 8.30 this morning uh, regarding some of the specif uh, specific details of um, this item. And considering that we held one of the four sections of this item back in committee um, already uh, to bring back uh, in the next cycle, we're going to, we want to move this entire item together. So we'll take um, all of item five and send it back to the Public Works and Infrastructure Committee. Councilmember Johnson, who chairs that committee, just returned back to work on Monday after a couple months at home on parental leave. And so um, with, uh, you know, after really extensive conversations with our chair and vice chair of the committee um, and uh, with all of the information in front of us, we're going to send it back to Public Works and Infrastructure and we will bring it back um, together uh, next cycle. Is that a motion? Yes, sorry. Second. So we have a motion to um, delay item number five and send it back to committee um, to be brought forward with um, other aspects of this committee report. I'm taking it. Um, at our next cycle. Is there any conversation on that? Councilmember Johnson? Thank you, Madam President. I would just say Councilmember Chugtai captured it well, and I'm happy to uh, speak in any more specificity or answer any more questions related to this. But I uh, fully support this, and I think the committee can do its work and get this item back expeditiously. Thank you, Councilmember Johnson. Seeing no further discussion, I will ask the clerk to call the roll on item number five. Uh, Councilmember Chuck Ty's motion to refer back to committee. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Warlaba. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Osmond. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. Um, that item carries, and that uh, item will be uh, referred back to committee. Uh, that completes all of our committee reports, and there are no reports from special committees today. And before we move to the notice of ordinance introductions, I do just want to note that we have two members of the US, United States Marines in, off, in our midst and would like to um, just welcome you and thank you for... Um, your patience in this extended meeting this morning. And uh, I also want to offer Council Member Vitao uh, an opportunity to make some comments as well. Thank you, Madam President. We have uh, here visiting us Staff Sergeant Stevens. You want to stand up, Staff Sergeant C Stevens and Sergeant McKenzie. Uh, I met them both at a community event, and they are here on assignment to enhance our Toys for Tots program. Um, they are not happy with what we have now <laughs> in Minneapolis, and they walked up to me at a community meeting and said, we want to meet the entire city council. We want to meet whomever we need to because we can do better on this Toys for Tots program, and they've been successful in other cities. So uh, we had lunch yesterday, and I had told them we would be having a meeting today, and they said, we're going to come. We want to see. We want to watch it go down, and they're here, 
Thank you both so, so very much for joining us today. Thank you for your service, and we are all committed to making sure that this program gets better. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Vital, and, and thank you, gentlemen, for your presence here today and for your service to the United States of America, and additionally, to our young people. Thank you very much. Um, the next order of business is the notice of ordinance introductions. There are two items today. The first is a notice uh, provided by Council Member Rainville to amend the licensing code to amend the definition of pedicab to include electric assist assisted vehicles. <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, and a notice by Council Member Payne to amend the Air Pollution and Environmental Protection Code to amend regulations related to paint facilities, equipment, mm -hmm. and products containing volatile organic compounds. These notices are hereby given and no further action is required at this time. Um, next is the, in the, uh, the next order of business is our introduction and referral calendar. And there is one item that was added today, a motion by Council Member Goodman to introduce an ordinance to Title 14, Chapter 362 of the Minneapolis Code of Ordinances, amending the provision to align off-sale malt liquor packaging requirements for brewers with newly enacted state um, statute for the first reading and referral to the Business Inspections, Housing, and Zoning Committee, this motion requires unanimous consent since prior notice was not given. Are there any questions on that referral? Councilmember Goodman. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I just wanted everyone to know what this is about because it requires unanimous approval. The Minnesota State Legislature passed a liquor omnibus bill that allows for breweries, including all of those in Minneapolis, to move towards different packaging requirements that will allow them not just to sell growlers, but also cans and bottles. Um, that requires local ordinance changes. And so the, these um, breweries kind of feel like they can do it tomorrow but actually our ordinance process takes about two months. And so the trying to expedite this and move it through is why I'm asking for um, unanimous consent today. I'll also note uh, that we don't license the um, sale of these things and we won't have anyone available to be inspecting whether or not cans and bottles start going out the door. We will do our best to move the process forward as quickly as we can uh, but we don't have enough staff to inspect that kind of regulation that we also do not license. So uh, hopefully everyone understands what I'm saying. We're going to try to move this forward as fast as possible to live with the intent of the state law um, as we, I would assume, would like to help these small breweries and businesses which operate all over the city to be able to make these changes as soon as possible. Thank you, Council Member Goodman. And I see Council Members Johnson and Payne in queue. Council Member Johnson. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I, I just, oh. I, I just, <laughs> uh, I just yeah. uh, wanna say I really appreciate the, the expeditious manner in which this is is moving uh, and in the support for small businesses and adapting to this positive change in state law. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Johnson. Councilmember Payne. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to say thank you on behalf of all of the wonderful brewers and distillers of Ward 1. This is this is a big deal for for the small businesses in my ward. So thank you. Councilmember Goodman. I do also want to note that uh, Councilmember Osman and Councilmember Rainville agreed with this strategy, so it wasn't just me. And also Joel Fussy and everyone in agenda setting um, also felt that this was a good direction to go. So, um, and I, I I really appreciate the um, levity about it today and the support. I think it's really important for these small breweries. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I think we have uh, commenced with comments on this item. Um, Kirk, please call the roll. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Warlabaugh. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. 
Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Osmond. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That item carries. Um, and our next order of business is resolutions. There are three resolutions today, two of which were presented at the beginning of today's meeting, and I will ask if there are any final comments on those honorary resolutions listed on our agenda. Uh, before I entertain a motion, well, please, um, I will entertain a motion to adapt these resolutions. So moved. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Horlebach. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Is absent. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. And uh, that carries those resolutions have been adopted. Next is uh, new business. We have five items uh, with three being nominations offered by the mayor for appointed positions. First, we'll considers, consider items one and two, a resolution related to the council's committee structure that would create a new subcommittee under the Committee of the Whole and a resolution that would amend the council's rules of order. Uh, I'll call on the clerk to review these matters. Uh, Madam President, this was an item introduced by Councilmember Ellison, uh, which also was on your behalf at the Committee of the Whole this week. It is an effort to establish a body that includes all council members to receive reports, updates, and other types of actions which involve all members of the council related to the investigation by the Minnesota Department of uh, Human Rights. And I think I would defer to Councilmember Ellison for comments. He worked very hard to put together the direction. As you noted, there are two related actions, one to establish this new subcommittee and two to update the council's rules to reflect that. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Um, any comments? Uh, uh, <clears throat> if I, you know, I, I know I discussed this at Cal. If any of my colleagues have further questions, I'm happy to talk about it um, uh, further. Uh, but generally, you know, I, I think that it's really important that uh, that we as a city and as a as, as a body, specifically this council, um, both acknowledge the existence of the MDHR report and remain active in the conversation um, as as things proceed forward. Um, I know that we can't be overly prescriptive in, in in what the end result of that will be, right? Of those negotiations, of those things, but certainly keeping the public uh, up to speed on what's happening and keeping ourselves up to speed, uh, it felt like it felt appropriate to create a, la a good landing place. My original intention was just to invite them to my own committee, but I think that through some discussion with 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 you, Council President, with Council Vice President, with the clerks, that it actually made a lot more sense for us to. Uh, uh, have that conversation as an entire body. Uh, and so thus the subcommittee um, of the committee of the whole, we can all be present, we can ask questions. And, um, and, and we also, we don't just have the MDHR report that it's out, but we also have uh, the pending uh, DOJ report. And I'm hoping that in the future, whenever, we don't have a timeline on that, but in the future, uh, this, this subcommittee could potentially be a landing place for that as well. Madam President, before he finishes his comments, there were some blanks in the resolutions that we put forward, so perhaps Councilmember Ellison could talk about chair, vice chair of the subcommittee and also the name. Yeah, I'm uh, happy to talk about that. So um, I am uh, 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 not married to any of these ideas, but I think that, but here's what, what I've put together so far. Um, I know that I'm, uh, uh, through some discussion with the council president um, uh, and council vice president, uh, uh, I would offer that the council president be the chair. Um, we're gonna have, be having some really important conversations. I think that there's no one better to, to, to chair the meetings than the council president. Uh, I have a lot of interest in, in these discussions, uh, and so I've, I've, I've put myself forward as vice chair. Um, if there's any opposition to that, I'm, 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 I'm open to that. Uh, but so far, myself and the council president as chair and vice chair. Um, 
as far regarding the name of the subcommittee, uh, I felt it was appropriate for us to uh, refer to it as the Pattern and Practice Investigation Subcommittee. Um, you know, because we've got this Pattern and Practice invest a report, uh, and we might have uh, another coming from the federal government. So, felt broad enough, uh, but specific enough for us to for uh, for it to not have any kind of mission creep into other committees. Thank you, Council Member Allison. Um, thank you, Council Member Allison and Mr. Clerk for, for that uh, clarity around this topic. And I do want to just um, offer my gratitude to Council Member Ellison for uh, bringing this forward on my behalf. Um, I was not at Committee of the Whole um, on Tuesday. However, if I were, I would have moved this uh, item myself. I think it is important that we have a space uh, to have conversations regarding the MDHR report and our ongoing um, negotiations with that um, commission, um, as well as any future um, um, reports from the Department of Justice when when they become available. But it, it really is important for us to have a um, transparent uh, process for our residents and constituents to be able to follow, to understand um, to the extent that we can discuss what is happening with those conversations. Um, and it, it's important for us to build trust, to build um, community, and to have open um, and transparent dialogue uh, with our residents. So thank you, Councilmember Ellison, for um, bringing that um, item forward on my behalf. Um, I am supportive of the name change. And to be very clear, I offered um, Councilmember um, Ellison uh, to be the co-chair of this committee, and I would ask my colleagues to support that as well. Um, and seeing no further, well, Madam no, President. there is uh, a council member in queue, Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Madam President, and I, I support this motion. I'm going to apologize to my colleagues because I, I realize no one spoke on the police chaplain's resolution, and I see our chief here, so for 10 seconds, I just want to recognize that the police chaplains program has been around now 50 years. We're celebrating that and specifically uh, police chaplain father Terrence Hayes has been dedicating himself for 50 years, 50 years to serving the people of Minneapolis. And uh, 50 years of service is a remarkable tenure for anyone, let alone the type of work that our police chaplains do, which is so heavy and, uh, and, and meaningful and important. So I just could not let the moment pass without uh, saying that, and hopefully others will uh, jump in as well on this too. So thank you, Madam President. Sorry again to my colleagues for changing the subject from the underlying motion, which I fully support. Thanks. Thank you, Councilmember Johnson. And, um, and, and I, I do appreciate and concur with your, your comments. I do wanna keep us on topic, however, um, and um, that is the, um, the item under new business, and um, I will entertain a motion to adopt these resolutions. So moved. But we, I think we did this. Um, we have a motion uh, by Council Vice President Palmasano and a second by Council Member Chuck Tai, and um, I will now ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Wansley Warlava. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Osmond. Aye. Council Member Payne. Aye. Council Member Koski. Aye. Council Member Shugtai. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. Um, and so. Um, though that was for items number one and two, there were additional items under new business. Um, and I'm asking the clerk to um, 
Madam President, new business items three and four are the mayor's nominations of additional department heads. Item number three is the mayor's nomination of Brian Tyner to the appointed position of fire chief for the four-year term that began January 3rd, 2022. Item number four is the appointment of Barrett Lane to the position of director of emergency management for the same time period. Item number five is slightly different. It is considering the mayor's nomination of civil service commissioners. There are two individuals who are being brought forward to terms to serve on our three-member civil service commissioners. Commission. And those are items three, four, and five. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Um, colleagues, we are now considering items uh, three through five the appointments of the fire chief, the director of emergency management, um, as well as the appointment of two civil service commissioners. Is there any um, discussion? So moved, Madam Chair. We have a motion and a proper second. Um, is there any discussion? Seeing none, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Warlaba. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Osmond. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. Uh, that carries, and um, those appointments will, um, those nominations will move forward to the appropriate committees for public hearings in the next council cycle. Um, do we have any announcements today? Uh, before my colleagues um, make any announcements, I do want to just note that we have a request for a closed session today. Um, and so, which is why I am asking for um, any announcements um, from my colleagues. Councilmember Wansley Borlebar. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilmember Palmasano, then Councilmember Wansley Wallabar. Thank you, Madam Chair. I did just want to mention briefly uh, that we just received an update on the rent stabilization work group. Maybe that's what you were, okay. Um, I wanted to just make sure the public knows that we extended the application deadline. Um, it, we're, we, we've ex decided to extend the deadline for applications to Monday, June 6th. Um, we've identified representatives from most of the designated organizations. Uh, some of those organizations still have to act themselves to select a representative. Um, we had an RFP open to the target market program and didn't receive any proposals. So now that RFP is public and the deadline for proposals to fr from the public is now June 8th. Um, we're also planning to have a an RCA for work group membership to biz on June 21st that will be considered by the end of the month at full council. And I just wanted to make sure this is a, a priority that the voters put before us and I wanted to make sure everybody was clear on the timeline. Thanks. Thank you, council member. And then uh, I believe we had council member Wansley Wallabar in queue. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as we highlighted earlier in this meeting, that this week uh, commemorates the, the murder of George Floyd um, and the, the global reckoning that followed his, the taking <coughs> of his life um, to be in community um, and further uh, reflect on the significance of that moment. Um, George Floyd um, Global Memorial will be holding events this Saturday uh, rise and remember, I encourage community to go out. This is going to be, of course, uh, held in Council President's uh, ward um, at George Floyd Square and really use this opportunity to, again, be in community with folks who are still on the ground looking to champion the change that we should have been making and have not made um, since his um, public lynching. So um, I'm really looking forward to being in community with uh, folks and, and really um, reaffirming our commitment towards the transformative change that that moment demanded. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Vita. 
Thank you, Madam President. I was having tef technical difficulties, so I couldn't get in, but I just wanted to acknowledge Father Hayes. Uh, Councilmember Rainville and I brought this resolution forward. He's celebrating 50 years of service, and they are gonna have a, a, celebration, a retirement celebration at his congregation on Sunday that we'll be presenting him this resolution at. He was unable um, to come due to health issues and concerns, and so I just wanted to thank him for his service and and uh, I'll report back after the celebration on Sunday. Thank you all for the vote and the support. Thank you, Councilmember Pitao. Councilmember Rainville. Thank you, Madam Chair. I will be joining Councilmember Vita uh, to honor Father Hayes, and I just uh, uh, want the, the full body here to know that in speaking with him, he has performed well over 200 marriages with the police department and over 400 baptisms. That's how much trust uh, that the officers have in him. So he, he's a, a really good man. And as Councilmember Johnson said, he's dedicated over 50 years of his life to helping heal. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Rainville. Councilmember Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. I thought I'd just take a moment to uh, say how glad I am to be back. And I know I mentioned this at some committees, but not at the full council. And I know more of our staff are uh, here for that. but. Uh, uh, our family was blessed to welcome our second child on March 31st, Benjamin. And uh, like uh, many families, unfortunately, experience, we uh, ended up having health concerns with him that led to him being in the NICU for six weeks. And that is a long time uh, to be away from uh, uh, my coworker family here at City Hall and to be away from the business of the city, but throughout it, I had so much support from my colleagues, from city staff, from my staff on Ward 12, Kate Nelson, Dylan Kessy. Thank you so much for keeping the Ward 12 office uh, running while I was out on that leave, and that really allowed me and my family to focus on Benjamin, and we're happy to report that he is now out of the NICU and doing well, and we also feel so fortunate to have the incredible assets of our, our medical institutions in this city that are here serving not just the residents of this city, but also residents across the state and across the entire Midwest. So we are fortunate to be over at uh, Fairview Children's Masonic, and I just can't speak highly enough about the whole team there, our nurses, our doctors, the staff, the care they put in, the love they put into helping families during their most difficult times is remarkable and it's something that should be celebrated and spoken about more. And I'm just so thankful that they're here for the people of our city and the people of our state and beyond. Thank you. Um, thank you, Councilmember Johnson, and welcome to the planet, um, Benjamin, and into this council family that we uh have here in, in in City Hall and on this dais. Um, and welcome back, Councilmember Johnson. Um, on behalf of my colleagues, I'm sure they've all said that to you um, individually, but I'll I'll say that publicly. Um, welcome back. And um, I did, um, I was gonna make the, the same announcement as Councilmember uh, Wansley Warlebaugh, so thank you so much. And did wanna just, acknowledge and note that um, yesterday there was a, a commemoration on the day of the murder of George Floyd, which included uh, the unveiling of the uh, honorary street name um, that renames and officially names uh, the intersection at 38th and Chicago, uh, George Perry Floyd Jr. Square. And so um, we were honored to to be joined by the family uh, for that unveiling. And um, and I think it was a really uh, special and important moment for them. And there was a subsequent uh, candlelight uh, visual. I, I saw a few of my colleagues out there. Um, and, um, you know, just really wanna uh, acknowledge and, and honor this moment as we continue to, to feel towards um, black liberation as we continue to strive uh, to create an anti-racist society. Um, and as council member um, uh, Wansley Warlebaugh noted, there will be a, um, 
a celebration of life called Rise and Remember this coming Saturday um, at uh, George Floyd Square. And with that, I don't see any other um, colleagues in queue. And so um, I will invite um, uh, I'll state that we have a request for a closed session. I'll tell you later. This closed session includes four litigation matters. Jackson versus the city of Minneapolis, Linda Torado versus the city of Minneapolis, and Arthur Knight versus the city of Minneapolis, and the claim of Pope versus the city of Minneapolis. Before I move to close the meeting, I'll recognize uh, Deputy City Attorney uh, Nielsen to provide the legal basis for the requested closed session. Um, Mr. Nielsen. Thank you, Council President. Uh, y yes, you are correct. Those four uh, legal matters, your attorneys would like to speak with you in a, a, um, um, an attorney-client privilege fashion in a closed session. Uh, the cases are in active litigation in state court um, in the, in the um, case of Arthur Knight, federal court in the cases of Jackson and Toronto, and then there is, um, as you mentioned, the claim of Pope. Um, we wish to discuss litigation strategy and or settlement possibilities in these matters. Accordingly, under the Minnesota Open Meeting Law, Minnesota Statutes, Section 13D.05, Subdivision 3B, the council may, upon a proper motion, close the meeting for the purposes of attorney-client communication. In considering the motion, the council should weigh the right of the public to know what its government is doing against the need of the city to preserve the confidentiality of its discussions with its attorneys. Thank you, Mr. Nielsen. And with that, I will move that our public meeting be closed as authorized under the provisions of the open meeting law, specifically Minnesota statutes section 13D.05 subdivision 3B for the purpose of discussing litigation matters with the city attorney. May I have a second? Second. Uh, the clerk will call the roll. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Horlava. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Present. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Osmond. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vito. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries. We'll now move, um, we'll now close this public portion of our meeting and convene in closed session for the viewing public. I'll note that the broadcast of this meeting will continue and the council will reconvene in public after we've concluded the closed session. Thank you.
The time is now 1.25, and the City Council has reconvened in open session following our closed session. I will ask the clerk to call the roll to verify the presence of a quorum. Councilmember Rainville is absent. Councilmember Wansley Warlaba is absent. Councilmember Goodman is absent. Councilmember Johnson. Present. Councilmember Osman is absent. Councilmember Payne. Present. Councilmember Koski. Present. Councilmember Shugtai. Present. Councilmember Chavez. Present. Councilmember Ellison. Here. Councilmember Vita. Present. Vice President Palmasano. Present. President Jenkins. Present. There are nine members present. Uh, the record reflects that we do have a quorum. And at this point, I would entertain a motion in the matter of uh, Jackson versus the city of Minneapolis. So moved, Madam Chair. Madam Vice President, can you read the motion for the record for us? Thank you. Sure. Um, the first motion, I. I move that all claims, including claims for attorney's fees and costs asserted in Virgil Jackson Jr. versus City of Minneapolis, U.S. District Court File Number 22CV642, be settled in the amount of $645,000 payable to Virgil Jackson Jr. and his attorneys from Fund um, 06900 The City Attorney's Office is authorized to execute any debt documents necessary to effectuate this settlement. Thank you, uh, Council Vice President. Is there a second? Uh, any discussion? I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Wansley Warlaba. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Payne. Aye. Council Member Koski. Aye. Council Member Shugtai. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 10 ayes. That item carries. And our next um, closed session um, item is a motion by Council Member Palmasano in the case of. Toronto versus the city of Minneapolis. Thank you, Madam President. I move that all claims, including claims for attorney's fees and costs asserted in Linda Toronto versus the city of Minneapolis, U.S. District Court file number 20 CV 01338 be settled in the amount of $600,000 and according to the terms of the settlement agreement between the parties, payable to Linda Toronto from fund number 06900-1500-100, 145100. The city attorney's office is authorized to execute any documents necessary to effectuate this settlement. Thank you, uh, Council Vice President. Is there a second? Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Wansley Warlava. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 10 ayes. And that item carries. And our next uh, closed session item is uh, the matter of uh, Arthur Knight versus the city of Minneapolis. I will move that the council. Um, that council action number 2022A-038378 be amended to reflect a settlement amount of $111,791.50 payable to Arthur Knight and his attorney, Haller Kwan LLP. The city attorney's office is authorized to execute all documents necessary to effectuate this settlement. Is there a second? We have a motion and a second by Council Member Chugtai. Any discussion? Seeing none, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Wansley Horlaba. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Payne. Aye. Council Member Koski. Aye. Council Member Shugtai. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. 
Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. And there are 10 ayes. Uh, that item carries and colleagues, we have completed all the items on our agenda. With nothing further to come before this council and without objection, I will declare this meeting adjourned. Uh, thank you everyone, hope you have a great weekend.